Uh, we're doing a VOD review here for Impulse, of course, one of our Hearthstone players, but Hearthstone's kind of whatever to VOD review. So we need some Overwatch for him. Uh, whenever we do a VOD review, the very first thing we always want to know is what our team comp is and what their team comp is. So we can understand what our win condition is and spend the rest of the game putting all our efforts into executing that win condition. Uh, we don't know what their team is yet, but we can tell what our team is. It's just going to be a simple protect the Bastion. To give a quick rundown, typical comp, you're going to have a main tank, an off tank, two DPS, a main heal, and an off heal. Uh, this comp kind of fits that to some extent. In this case, Sigma's actually your off tank, which means Sigma's job is to assist Reinhardt in completing his job. Reinhardt's job is to help Bastion in completing his job. Bastion's job is to kill. Morris's job is to assist Bastion. Morris's job is to assist the tanks in their goal. So again, Morris is helping these two accomplish their goals. His goal is to help his goal. His goal is to help his goal. So by proxy, Arisa is helping Bastion. That's what the whole point of this comp is. You really help Bastion accomplish your goal. Ash is there for extra damage. Pick off stragglers. Uh, defend against the flank. Go on a flank herself if she wants. Super simple. I do want to note this is pretty low rank. This is silver. Uh, not that it matters too much, but do understand that anything i'd say below masters even then uh the coordination factors are going to be there especially in silver however luckily enough in silver one person can kind of carry these games pretty effectively uh, as reinhardt you can do a lot to help your team win all you need to do is essentially win more fights than your opponent and you should win games more times than not especially at this rank because everyone's just gonna stagger in it's gonna be horrible uh, regardless let's just move on I do want to note that we never, ever, ever care about mechanics when we're doing bot reviews. Missing shots, reacting slow, that's all stuff that's going to improve with time and you putting in the effort to get better. What we're looking for is ways to maximize our cooldown, our kit, our shield health, our positioning, how to assert your dominance over another main tank, how to really assist your bastion in getting value. Uh, pretty much everything we can do that you maybe haven't thought about that you can't just work on without being exposed to. So that's what we're looking for in bot reviews. Okay, quality isn't the best. We'll work on recording next time. Alright. <clears throat> uh, so we see an Arista shield here. I can't really tell. Is that a Bastion? Whatever they are. We'll, we'll, let's run this again. It's hard with the low quality. So Arisa, Junkrat, Sigma, Kree. We don't know what the healers are. Uh, so first thing we want to do is Reinhardt. And number one thing as far as ways you can maximize your effectiveness is maximizing your ult charge using your fire strike is your primary way to get ult charge pre-fight it's awesome you just throw it right here and you hit three people every hit now i think gives eight to nine percent something like that of your ult charge let's go ahead and throw that up there can't hurt maximizing that kit uh there is going to be one thing and i guarantee you don't do and i'm going to show you how to do it near the end of this video and it's shield dancing one thing to note is your shield's essentially almost dead already again hard to see but that's either six or eight hundred uh, having that low shield means you can't protect your Bastion, right? And what is our primary goal right now? It's to enable the Bastion to do more damage. So if our shield's down, we don't have a great way to do that. Because if our shield's down, we basically have to body block for him, which also blocks his vision, which is kind of moot. We don't really want to do that. We want him to get the damage out where he needs. Uh, so I'll teach you how to shield dance a little bit. Just keep your shield health a bit higher. Okay. And we see what happens. Kind of low rank stuff. Both of their tanks fell down. Their two DPS stayed up top and just got melted by Bastion. They each have 200 HP. This guy does a whopping like 1,000 damage per second and just killed him. Now we pretty much win. Uh, going to get Lamp. This is okay. If their team was completely full, those DPS were up. This would be a really bad move. But since their DPS is down, go ahead, be aggressive, walk in here, destroy stuff, get your ult charge as we talk about. Super important. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, that Ash can't hit a shot. It's kind of funny. And we get the suck pin. Cool. Okay. Uh, so you have a couple options here as Ryan. You can move up to get some extra ult charge and aggressive positioning. Or you can just go protect the Bastion. There's no real right choice here at this rank. It's just kind of playing. Now going over here might not be the best play. So if we're going to go up and poke for stuff, you usually want to go underneath here and then just kind of throw damage at them so you're in a better position to get back to your Bastion. If we're over here, we don't really get any help. Remember, we have a Mercy and a Mortar heal. 
So let's say you go over here and you get stunned by the Kree, he right clicks you for 300-ish damage and you have to start backing away with your shield because your shield's up, you move slower and they just kind of run you down. Your Mora and your Mercy can't really heal you at this range. If you had an Ana, sure they can heal you, even Zen could heal at this range, but Mora and Mercy can't. So you're putting your team in a really bad position. Uh, we're going to unbind this for you. This is a really bad move. Again, a solid Kree would just stun you here and hit you. He would actually wait for you to pass. He'd hit you once or twice, or like right now he'd peek, shoot you once or twice, then stun you and right click you, and he can actually take 500 health pretty easily. But he's just running away. We just run him down. Cool. So typical lowering stuff, and that's okay. So let's jump to the next fight. Okay, we're tunnel vision and kind of hard. As we see, our Bastion has died. We have failed in our role. So we saw the Orisa walking. We know at this point that they're going to get ready to jump on our Bastion. And again, what is our role? What is our job as Reinhardt? It's to enable the Bastion. And Bastion is going to die because we're not over there. <clears throat> so now we get in the fight. Your job as main tank is to take and control space, and that's how you enable for your Bastion and shielding him, of course. We just gave up this space. This is where you need to be. You should have been standing right here before this fight happened, kind of pushed them off. Understand that if you're standing in this hallway and your healers are healing here, your healers are safe. So they actually have to walk past you, which is pretty much impossible as Reinhardt. <clears throat> okay, so we go in, we get the pin. You're going to get slept. Okay. And just clean up. Tiny things, dying is always really bad. Just watch your health on these. Uh, aggressive pin, just to kind of recover is whatever. We see the Ana, so we go to try to kill her. Get slept. Uh, also note, whenever you're aggressing on an Ana or support or DPS, anything that has a get off me kit. So for example, sleep is a get off me kit. Nade is a get off me from Ana. For Kree, you got flashbang. For Junkrat, you have your mine. For fairy, you got concussion. Tracers, you have recalls and blinks. Genji, you have a deflect and dash. They're always going to use that almost panicking instantly. So as soon as this Ana realizes you're in front of her, she's going to sleep. So just get ready to shield those. She's also going to throw her nade next if she had it. But she didn't, so we kill her. And now at these points, I want to watch my health. Your solo health, all you have to do is kite her. You just keep your shield up and walk by her, and she can't kill you. Those things you want to look for. Just don't die. Dying's bad. Okay, we got long spawn, but we get there. Okay. So this is where we could be, this is fine. You can also push up, uh, but at least right here, we're giving value to our Bastion, which again, is our primary goal, if not our only goal as Reinhardt in this comp. And this is fine. I'm just chilling, we're pushing the cart. And we're good. Now Reinhardt in Bastion comps is pretty much the most boring thing in the game. So you doing this is actually a bad play. Disengage you from a Bastion. Um, Obviously, you kind of want to go out there and kill stuff, but who does more damage, this Gatling gun or your hammer? And the answer is undeniably that Gatling gun. So why not just put your shield up right here and just let him do the damage? You have to understand that there are characters on your team that do way more damage than you. Let them do that. Again, if their team wasn't already dead, if you going on that flank, what that could end up doing is open up Bastion's backside to Sigma, to Kree, if they had a sniper to the snipers, to say a Junkrat, could drop things over it. Cannot expose your Bastion. Now, tiny note, unless they patched it, which I think they did, because I think I tried this lately. Right about where you are, if you stand right here and jump onto this corner, you can actually shatter into the hallway. But I think they actually patched that. Okay, we're unbinding your shift. Okay, so we're chilling. We see that they're coming out bottom right. And we go for a pin. So what this pin does is it exposes your Bastion and it exposes you to your backside. You're really used to, especially playing at low rank, and not getting punished on these pins because no one has enough focus damage. As you start going up rank, you should die immediately when doing this. Here, and you should already be dead. Oh, they don't have the focus fire where they do anything, and that's okay. But also, besides just putting yourself at risk, we're not protecting the Bastion anymore. And number one job, protect this Bastion. Also, if you do shift into an Orisa, she can just shift and counter you. Okay, so... Cap the point. Haven't capped, so you could shatter here if you want. We don't. 
I'm just gonna walk away. We're just chilling. You gonna shatter here? No. You gonna shatter at any point? What is happening? Okay, now we shatter. Okay. Bad shatter. Okay, so let's discuss how many opportunities we had to shatter here and didn't take it. So we aggress in. That's just fine. So a couple of key things that you're always looking for when you're going for Ryan Shatters. One, Arissa Fortify, and two, her shield cooldown. I don't expect a silver Arissa to save her shield to block your shatter, so that's okay. But always look for a fortify. And then even if you can get the squishies, which was right there, that would have been a really nice shatter. So is Reinhardt, if you can ever get two or the main tank, that's always a win. In this case, we could have gotten the main tank and healers. Shatter right here would hit these. That might get blocked. Or we could walk in here and shatter this way and get all three. Would have been pretty solid. We don't. That's okay. Okay. They just used ults. Another great time to shatter is Reinhardt. So imagine you're the other team. You're Arissa. You just got nanoed and you dropped your bongo. Are you going to be passive? No, you're going to be super aggressive. Super aggressive is how you get hit by shatters. So go ahead and walk in here. Shatter their whole team. Win the fight. As soon as she walks up right there, you go and shatter her ass. You could have even baited her and walked to the right and got everyone after they walked past the shield. You could also shatter reapers during their ult. Your shatter goes underneath the cart, so you would get the reaper. It also hits on top of the cart, so don't worry about that. All right, Mercy's dead. So Mercy being dead means we probably win this fight no matter what. And if we are observing the kill feed, so we've killed one, we've killed two, they're going to res one, we kill another. So we're up 6v4. When you are up 6v4, pretty much any time you have two characters or not, and they're not committing anything, don't use these. Save it for the next fight. This fight is guaranteed one. There's no way you guys lose this fight, right? Don't use the shatter. Wasted cooldown. No matter what, you guys win that fight. No matter what. No reason to use an ult there. Save that for this next fight. Okay. So we're just kind of walking into them. Let me see this whole thing. So again, primary goal is to protect the Bastion. Just keep him up and let him do damage. That's all you got to do. So this, not great. They aren't contesting cart yet, which means we don't need to aggress into them. Just let the cart push, keep your shield in front of Bastion, and destroy their shields. Us walking up means we lose our shields. We see they have a Bastion now as well. Our shields broke, and we hit shift. No. We're unlining that. And it works, because this game's dumb. So again, this is a thing that, not to bash on ranks, but would only ever have a remote chance of working in low rank. So what should happen at really high rank to do this play, one, you would never do it this far away because a Bastion would either react and move or straight kill you. Uh, if you have a Sigma that pushes his barrier along with you as it moves up, it moves the same speed as a Reinhardt charge, you can do this play, but this Bastion, all you need to do is shoot you and you die. And he didn't, so he dies. Or a Junkrat dies. Regardless, don't do this play. What is our primary goal? Protect the Bastion. The Bastion didn't even turn around to shoot you fast enough. That's amazing. Um, yeah, he's like, forgot you were there. That's funny. He's getting healed when he's full health. That's funny, too. Okay, you get revived. We're just kind of walking with our shield up. Okay, what are we doing here? We're doing nothing here. We're just wasting time, not protecting our Bastion. It works, though, because it's low rank. Okay, cool. Alright, so now we're on Arisa for defense. Same thing, primary goal, protect the Bastion. That's all you gotta do. A uh, couple fun notes, if you shoot your ball right here, you could actually pull them up off of the cart so your Bastion can get some chip damage. Uh, always kind of a fun little thing to do. Alright, they're running Winston, a Doomfist, 
Diva, so they're full dive. Alright, wasted cooldown. So when they're running dive, the whole idea of dive is everyone on their team within a second or two together can jump on, get all their damage, and jump out. This is why Risa is really good against dive, because what happens is when the Winston jumps, let's say from over here, and he jumps and he lands right in front of you. What you can do is you can Arisa pull right here as he's about to land and pull him back and then the Bastion kills him. <clears throat> super simple, super easy. Instead, we waste our cooldown. Right here, do nothing. So even if you were theoretically to put up here and pull up the Winston, it might be an okay play, but D.Va would eat it. I would much rather just save it. Again, primary goal, protect the Bastion, let him get a ton of damage out. Using this is doing nothing to help that Bastion. You are a tank. Use your kit to prevent damage on your team, not to get kills, not to be aggressive. Your kit, both of these and this, are really good at getting damage off of DPS. So, they dive you, you use your kit to pull them away so your Bastion can stay alive longer. All you have to do. And Reaper just walks up and kills Bastion. We're going to res because this game's... Really dumb. Okay. We're not going to res. Okay. What's happening here? A couple other small notes. Um, if you're standing on this ledge here, you can actually contest the cart and prevent it from moving. Really valuable is Arissa since you can engage and disengage with your shield. Alright. <clears throat> I would also save my right click till after she shifts. So she can't just walk away from it. Okay, I'm just moving around. What's happening here? Are we doing anything? No. Go to cart. 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 Your job. Go to cart. Bastion's dead. Your job is to take and control space now. And Reaper gonna walk all over us. Damn, I'm gonna start going to Reaper when I'm smurfing. Nobody can kill him. That's funny. Okay. A uh, couple more advanced notes. In... Every phase, so you have the starting phase, this is called streets phase, and this is final or third phase. You should have to lose a fight twice for it to cap. So we lost that first fight since you and Bastion died. What everyone should have done is went to cart and died before it got to this point. Because then after everyone dies, you can all recontest when the cart's right about here. Uh, but instead, we only lose one fight, which means... It, think about it this way. If it takes 30 seconds for a fight on average... And you have to stop them over, let's say, seven minutes. So 30 seconds per fight on average, you should have to win. Let's do some math. Ow. That hurt. Uh, you should have to win 14 fights. Or essentially, yeah, the 14 fights total is what should happen if you're trying to cap them. If they cap enough points, whatever. You got to win 14 fights. Now, let's say they can get it in one fight per push. They only have to win three fights. See the issue here? So if they take 30 seconds on average to do a fight, and they win, they should have to win six fights, so it should take them at minimum three minutes to cap. Or if you let them cap in 30 seconds each time, a full phase, they only need to spend a minute and a half capping. All this game is is time management. Have more time than your opponent. So that's why you want to go down cart, but... That's not gonna. That doesn't even happen in GM games, so don't worry about it. But as far as team play goes, just something to know. Okay. So everyone's up here staggering. We use ults after they cap a point, which is also dumb. Right, there's Winston. Go ahead and pull Winston. So what happens here is Winston uses his shift ability, which is the jump. Which means he cannot use that for another six or so seconds. So this is an opportunity to pull him because when you pull him, your whole team can hit him way easier because he stops moving. So just go ahead and right click him here. So you'd right click him, he'd ult, but he'd already be about 500 health or so. And he wouldn't be able to get out, but instead he gets out. Okay. Let's go control some space. Yeah, find the Bastion. Okay. So, probably looking to bongo here, most likely. Okay, so Reaper's down all his cooldowns. He can't shift again. This is when you want to right-click him. Don't chase him. Don't chase him. Stay with your team. Shield that. Shield that. No. 
So anyway, two misplays. Uh, I would just immediately orb towards here to pull him, so you can kill him right now. And second is on the Theo bomb. Just put your shield down. Anywhere. Just aim straight down. And press your shield button. It'll block it. Okay. We'll get ready as well. Okay. Bastion's dead, which means you probably lose this fight. So don't use your ult. Okay. We're trying to walk away. So this is also one thing to note. Uh, if we know for sure we're going to lose the fight, die on cart. Because as long as you die on cart, the cart won't move. If the cart's not moving, then you're basically winning the fight. So if you die while walking away, you give them more ult charge while the cart is moving and wasting more time. Again, that seven minutes thing we talked about, bad. Waste time. That's all you have to do. Also, this is a guaranteed loss fight. Don't use your ult. If you watch the kill feed, I think this is like a 2v... At this point, I think it's a 2v5. So you for sure lose this fight. So this is a wasted ult. Oh, we have the soldier up. So it's like a 3v5. Not the worst. Okay, I got it. Somebody's knocking on the door. One sec. We switched to Winston. Um, now it's whatever. We'll break down some Winston stuff. Uh, so a couple things is Winston. Let's see here. So Winston, when you engage, obviously you shift in and then you do damage, right? Wrong. If you do that, you have no disengage, correct? You'd have to shift in. You'd have to survive until this comes off a cooldown, about six seconds, and get out. Especially at higher rank, you're not going to survive. So what you want to start emphasizing as Winston is starting on a high ground so you can actually tickle them or starting within a doorway so you're attacking with your primary fire while you still have your shift up. That way, you can do damage. Well, Tessa can look more like this. You can do damage. As you're doing damage, you can drop your shield to mitigate some damage and healing, and then when you get weak, you can shift out. Rinse and repeat. That's how you play Winston in 20... What year is this? 2019? 2019. It used to be different. It used to be you jump on them, you get a Zarya bubble on you or a Diva Defense Matrix on you. The Defense Matrix and or bubble should theoretically last long enough that you can do your damage while your shift comes off cooldown and then shift out. Different these days, partly due to character changes, mainly due to the fact that Diva and Zarya are not played much anymore. Um, also with an increase in CC, uh, Brigette kind of destroyed dive comps for a long time. Orisa is really good at shutting down Winston. Sigma can shut down Winston. Uh, there's so much more CC readily available. Doomfist fucks that up. Uh, Sombra messes you up pretty bad. So we don't want to do that anymore. Instead, we want to start somewhere maybe in this cubby, in this cubby, up on this high ground, so we can use our Tesla cannon, drop our shield, get out. Now you're talking about how we just completely waste our shield right here. You're not a Reinhardt. Your job now is not to protect your DPS as Winston. That is not Winston's job. Winston's job is to go in and disrupt. That's your job. So now we don't have our shield, which is pretty crucial. Okay, so they jump us. They drop their shield. We still have our shift. So theoretically, in this matchup, your Winston versus Sarah Winston, you have the advantage because you still have your shift. Both Winstons use their bubbles, but he's down on ability and you're not. So, you could mess him up if you want, but he's able to just walk away. Yeah, that's fine. Go for your squishy targets like that. I have no issue with you making that play. Okay. And we die here. Just get out. What is your goal here? You have no health. Alright, let's go to cart and die. Cool. Okay. So we use all of our abilities with zero value. And just know, I'd say 99% of things I say in all of auto reviews at all level are gonna be negative things. That's just kind of how it works. Uh, but the lower the rank, the more. This is a reason why, I mean, this is below 50th percentile. I know you're newer to the game. So we're gonna try our best to get you up to speed as fast as possible. And best way to do that is to just last you pretty much. So we're gonna use our shift and our E to zero value. 
That did nothing besides put us on a six second cooldown. This does nothing. It protects nobody, not even yourself. Wasted abilities, the bane of my existence. Okay. Okay, so we disengaged from the Reaper. That wasn't a terrible shift. But we're gonna die. Okay. And it's just, we get so far behind at the start, it kinda doesn't matter. Okay. Brian Hart, we're not running Bastion anymore? No, we're still running Bastion. I need you to protect the Bastion. Okay. You're gonna shift. Bad shift. I'm shocked it worked. You should have died. And this is just a scrum, so yeah, just swing. This part's fine. Okay. So next fight, a uh, couple things to know. As Reinhardt on this cart, you can actually jump and go up there. Oh, that's too important, but from very specific angles. This is fine. This is what you're supposed to do. This isn't. So again, our Bastion just immediately dies where we could have had way more value. So if the Reaper is targeting the Bastion like he should, he shouldn't be targeting you, you can keep your shield up and use your third person view to just kind of spin your shield and protect the Bastion. But again, he walks in, destroys our Bastion, and we're down our Bastion again for another team fight, which should not happen. is so annoying how did we get over here what did you do this is what we're talking about about not resetting properly and what low ranks do is starts flooding wait for your whole team how are you guys going to win this you're down a ton of characters if anything just stand in front of this bastion and shield but don't walk into their team like this now you're just staggering longer Guys, not wrong. Okay. You guys kind of grouped, as in you guys went and all together. That's really good. We need to shield dance more. You can move way faster when you shield dance. Again, I'll show you that right after this. Hey, so you're just walking with your shield up. That's bad. Okay. It's an ult. We shatter. We hit Lucio with it. It wasn't terrible. Oh, you can lose this fight. But they used all their ults, so let's count how many ults that they just used. Alright, one ult, that's Winston ult. Reaper ult. Diva bomb. Lucio beat. Soldier ult. Oh, and Reaper ult? Did we count that? Yeah, it's just the other support, which we haven't done. Who is the other support? Baptiste. So they use five ults, which means they should lose the next fight, because you guys should be up ults. Should be, but I think everyone just hits Q at the same time. Okay, you guys get a pick. We move up. There's Baptiste ult. Reaper teleports to point. Not your job, not your job, not your job, not your job. Go protect Bastion. Or whatever DPS you have. The Reaper's just walking in them. Super sad. Okay, this is just a mess. We, we lose this. And I'm guessing you full hold them. Most people don't submit videos to me unless they win for some reason. No, you lose this. Do you win this? You win this. Okay. Sounds about right. Cool. All right, we're playing Zarya. Finally, some fun stuff. Okay. What comp are we running? You need to hit tab way more. All right, Sigma main tank. What do we have here? Moria, Mercy, Sigma, Reaper, you, and then what's the other DPS? Soldier? Probably Soldier. Oh, that's their Reaper. Yeah, I don't know. 
Okay. So with Zarya, the very first bubble that you use every match should be for energy. Typically, you use bubbles on yourself for energy. Make sure we use that for energy. So you can walk into them right about here. Wait till they start shooting at you and just hit shift. Super simple. Get that energy. Get something going. All you need is like 20-ish and you can start doing value. All right. Missed a key moment for energy as well. So we've all the mercy there. That bubble. So your bubbles on teammates are 90% of the time going to be used on your tanks. The other 10% of the time should be when your team's making a play. So using soldier roll or reaper roll, you got to bubble that, you know. Basic things. Or your support's getting dove, bubble that. So instead, so we see here, they hard engaged. They don't have a choice at this point. Their team committed. Bubble your sigma. You get 40 energy. I can guarantee it. Right, we bubble ourselves. Then we bubble sigma. Too late for any damage. They're off of cooldowns. We chase the reaper. What's happening? Uh, so things with the Diva Demex, almost every character has a way to do extra damage to it. What you want to do is you want to time an AoE. So you see her about to demech, right click on her mech as she demex, and you actually hit Baby Diva. So instead of doing that, you could have right clicked her for more damage. Okay, that's going to be dead by the time, like naturally dead by the time you destroy it anyway. Okay, we're just all over the place. So in scrums like this, you should be 100 energy. You have no reason not to be 100 energy. Like, even right there. Like, use your abilities. So you walk in here. You should know your shift's coming off cooldown. Hit your shift. You can't die there. You cannot die there. Okay. You shift. You shift. 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 Jeez. Look how late this comes out. So we talk about not wanting to focus on mechanics, you know, reaction time and stuff, but this is anticipation. Look at how the fair is moving. You know she's gonna drop down a barrage. Prepare for it, hit your shift, mess her up. Okay. Cool, cool. You need to use your bubbles more for more energy. There we go. Azari is one of the best boosting characters because you shouldn't ever die at low rank, but you should always have 100 energy. We need to use our bubbles quite a bit better. Start by just focusing on using your personal bubble for energy. Every time it's off a of cooldown, think, how can I get 40 energy off a of hitting shift right now? And then save your projected bubble for your main tank or for a key target. Right here, as soon as this breaks, I probably... Ooh. So that was better. You could grab here. All right, all right. Wow, this is just a scrum and a half. What's happening? Oh, gross. I love these fights, they're so stupid. Okay. That was fine, walking past that, you're dead. All right, so this is a mess. I'm going to show you how to shield dance. Okay, let's go, let's go shield dance. Shield dance. Actually, all this updates. Uh, always appear offline. Why have people seen me? I'm sure I've actually done a video on this. Maybe not on this YouTube account, though. There we go. Perfect. So we'll review this video together. Oh, it's just shield scouting. Never mind. Well, I guess it's a cool trick for you to learn.
<laughs> wow. I don't realize how much of an ass I am. Okay. So that wasn't shield dancing, but that was still something you should probably be aware of. Okay. Yeah, the shield scouting thing's super nice. Ryan's definitely, besides fair, probably my best character. I love me some Ryan. All right, we'll just show you real quick. This VOD view went on way too long, but that's okay. Okay. So, as Reinhardt, you have a lot of options. Uh, you can definitely move, just kind of going like this. So you can shield, drop shield while you're kind of moving forward, jumping. It lets you move essentially at full speed and keeps your shield up much faster. You can do this while backing up. It just lets you move around the battlefield better, and by shield dancing like this, you keep your shield up a lot longer. So, for example, if I'm just holding my shield up against these guys, you can see, it, obviously, I don't do near enough damage to prove the point too well. But, so that's a bit of damage. Now, if we kind of shield dance, what's going to happen is the damage that gets through is almost negligible. It's going to get healed. Since most comps have some form of AoE healing, letting a little bit of chip damage through isn't a big deal. If anything, it actually helps you out because it lets your supports build their ults a lot faster. Um, Make sure shield dance. It's also super important if you're trying to disguise two things, or actually three things. One, if you're trying to disguise when you're actually going to be swinging on them, you want to make sure to shield dance all you can. So you see I'm not actually hitting them at all here, but from the opponent's perspective, it really looks like I'm about to swing, so they're going to play more defensive whenever they can. And then you can also sneak in your fire strikes much better this way. And most importantly, if you're trying to disguise your shatter, you have to be shield dancing, mixing in fire strikes, so that you can't have a rhythm on you. Because otherwise, if you just hold your shield like this, and they know you have shatter, as soon as you drop your shield and hit Q, they're going to realize you have shatter, and you're shattering, and they're going to block you. So I want to make sure to shield dance a bit to disguise. It makes your shatter significantly easier to hit, which is how you can kind of carry as Ryan. Let's get our shatter up. Okay. So same thing. You just kind of mix in your fire strikes, and then you can shatter any time, and they'll never expect it. It works every time. So make sure we shield dance. Uh, other tiny things, when you are in Ryan, if you just kind of swing, you can increase your range. Like swing your mouse like this. You hit all around you. So just one thing to know, it's mainly used like in a grav. You just kind of do this, you can hit things around the grav, but not all that important. So yeah, any other questions, definitely let me know. Let's see if we can get this up. Yay. Okay, fun, a lot of views, Ryan, cool.